morning, everybody, and welcome back to another Kano Tryharding Modern. Today, we'll be playing Hammer Time, of course. Hammer Time is currently the top listed deck on MTG Goldfish. Of course, we know those me that number means nothing because Wizards selectively reports deck lists. However, they feel like reporting deck lists as they deliberately suppress information about the metagame uh, to help prevent the metagame from being solved. This is very arguable, and I'm not going to get into it. However, Hammer Time is a good deck regardless. I know this from first-hand experience. I was just playing this on stream last night, and uh, I really like the deck. I think it might actually be edging on too strong in a lot of circumstances, but um, yeah, for those of you that don't know, Hammer Time revolves around the deck. Uh, the card in the deck, Colossus Hammer, which is a one-mana equipment that gives equipped creature plus 10, plus 10, and that creature loses flying. Plus 10, plus 10 is a big buff, and normally it would take 8 or 7 mana, uh, 8 mana to equip it. Sorry. Uh, the equipment would normally take 8 mana to equip, but this deck it uh, revolves around cheating this equipment onto creatures quickly. So to do that, we have a couple of cards. We have Sigarda's Aid, which uh, is a one-mana enchantment that says you can cast equipment as though it had flash, and whenever an equipment enters the battlefield under your control, you can attach it to a creature you control. So this lets you play Colossus Hammer as a combat trick. You can do things like animate an Ink Moth Nexus, attack while it has flying, wait for blockers to be declared or not be declared, and then attach a hammer to it, and it doesn't matter that it has flying, it effect or doesn't have flying, it effectively doesn't or effectively had flying the entire combat. Um, so it can fly over your opponent's creatures and then pick up a hammer and kill your opponent. Um, other than that, it's just a one-mana way to equip stuff. Uh, and then we have Pure Steel Paladin, which, as long as we have Metalcraft, equipment costs zero to equip. And whenever an equipment enters a battlefield under our control, we can draw a card. It's a very good card in this deck. So to help enable the Metalcraft situation and to help speed up the deck, we have a bunch of Zero Drops and Springleaf Drum. So this enables Metalcraft very quickly. This is a way to play like four cards on turn one and set up for a turn two kill potentially. Um, to help increase consistency, we have a few tutors. We have Steel Shaper's Gift, which is a one mana tutor for any equipment and uh, then put it in your hand. And we have Stoneforge Mystic, which can tutor up an equipment and put it into our hand when it enters the battlefield. Uh, we also have Urza Saga. Urza Saga, on its uh, level 3 of the Saga, we can actually go and get a Colossus Hammer and put it on the battlefield. If we started off by playing Urza Saga, Springleaf Drum, Zero Drop into Sigarda's Aid, we can tutor up an, a Colossus Hammer and equip it on turn 3 and then just kill our opponent. Um... And then as alternative, like, backup Urza Saga targets in case we need them, we have a Pithing Needle, which is usually a pretty good grab, and Shadow Spear, which if our opponent plays a ton of blockers, we can't sneak past with a gigantic hammer. Uh, this gives Trample and Life Link. It's a way to basically completely obliterate Burn. Um, yeah. Out of the sideboard, we have... Or, hang on. In order to protect our game plan, we also have Giver of Runes. And we have Esper Sentinel, which is to help recoup a bunch of the cards we cast. It also enables Metalcraft a little bit better because it is an artifact creature. Um, out of the sideboard, we have some more removal. We have Fragmentize, we have Paths, we have Seal of Cleansing, and we have Prismatic Ending as ways to deal with onboard permanents that might prevent us from furthering our game plan. If we go up against a black or red deck, we have Sanctifier Envec, which is a very good stone wall. It completely obliterates the uh, Delirium deck because it just says, like, they can't get Delirium um, and they have no way to answer this card. It's pretty insane. Um, we could also just stick a hammer on it and kill our opponent that way. We have Tormod's Crypt uh, as Grave Hate of Choice, Graph Digger's Cage, Pithing Needle number two, and Relic. All of these are things that can be tutored up off of Urza Saga if we needed them. And of course we have a card that should definitely be banned in Modern, Luris of the Dream Den. Uh, interestingly enough, we're playing Luris without Bauble, which is kind of uh, unheard of. But um, it's worth it for buying back all of our combo pieces, basically. It ensures we can do so in the late game. Alright, I think I've said everything I need to say, so I will see you guys in round one. Alrighty, we are on the draw. But this is a very good hand. This is a turn three kill. Um, opponent is also a Luris deck. So we will be keeping seven. Opponent plays a Polluted Delta. They might be Mill. More likely they are Grixis whatever. Uh, we untap. 
We draw a pure Steel Paladin. Play a Plains. Play an Ornithopter. Play Cigar to Zade. Pass the turn. Opponent bobbles themselves to see if they want to crack Polluted Delta. They crack Polluted Delta for a Blood Crypt tapped. Interesting. Opponent Inquisitions sees that we have Hammer, Stoneforge Mystic, and Pure Steel that they can take. They take Stoneforge Mystic. They play a Bloodstain Mire. And they pass. We untap, draw planes, play Ink Moth, go to combat, attack for zero, make it ten. Okay, hit our opponent down to nine, pass the turn. Opponent cracks Bloodstained Mire on our end step for a Steam Vents tapped. They untap, they play a Scalding Tarn, so they probably have Colagon's command if they're not conceding or they have a blocker. Opponent passes. We untap. We draw Stoneforge Mystic. So, play a Plains. Play Stoneforge Mystic. Go and get another Hammer. Go to combat. Attack for 10. Opponent cracks Scalding Tarn. Gets an Island. So if they do have Colagon's Command, they have to destroy Ornithopter. And they're going to kill Stoneforge with the damage. Play another Colossus Hammer. Suit up the Stoneforge. It would have been better off making us discard. Pass the turn. Or they would have been better off shocking it in response to its Enter the Battlefield trigger. So upon it untaps, they play Expressive Iteration. They exile a Bauble. They play the Bauble. They play Polluted Delta. Crack it. Get a Watery Grave, Sack Bauble, and pass. We untap, they draw a card. We draw Urza's Saga. So, play Saga. It gains its ability. Animate Ink Moth. Play Paladin. They would have to have double Fatal Push to survive, or Bolt Push. Okay, game's over. So, versus this deck, we're bringing in three Sanctifier Envec. Uh, I think for three Giver of Runes, or... Maybe a Giver of Runes and a couple of Steel Shapers gifts. Try it like that. So start by revealing Luris. I will be keeping this hand. It's pretty bad against Hand Hate if they have multiple Hand Hate spells, but a single Hand Hate spell we probably can get around. Opponent mulliganed to six. We draw a Memnite. So play a Plains. Play Springleaf Drum. Play Ornithopter. Float White. Play Sigardizade. And play a Memnite. Pass the turn. Opponent cracks a Scalding Tarn. Gets a Blood Crypt untapped. Unholy heats the Memnite. Play another Memnite. Pass the turn. I was going to pass to second main phase to see if I could bait out any instant speed interaction. Opponent bolts. Then plays an Alpine Moon to name Saga. Okay. Well, we drew Saga. So, play Stoneforge Mystic. Go and tutor up the hammer. If we play the Saga, the Saga dies immediately, so there's no reason to play the Saga. Opponent plays an Expressive Iteration. They exile Ragavan. They play Polluted Delta. They shock a Steam Vents, and they play Ragavan. We untap. We draw planes. Play a planes. Go to combat. Attack for zero. Make it ten. Okay. Play Pure Steel. So I missed a draw by doing it this way, but... This way stops Ragavan from attacking without a Fatal Push. Maybe that was a mistake. Maybe I actually needed to keep the equipment on the Ornithopter. Because then I have two high priority targets. Something to think about, I guess. Okay. Opponent kills Pure Steel Paladin and the Colossus Hammer. They're going to hit us for two. They exile a Pure Steel Paladin. We untap. We draw a Colossus Hammer. So, Colossus Hammer. Put it on the Ornithopter. Technically, I should have attacked first, because if my opponent had a push, they might have used it on Stoneforge Mystic to prevent the one damage. But, we got there, and I'll see you guys in round two. Alright, round two. We've got everything but a way to equip the hammer. Um, while I could mulligan for something better, I'm actually going to keep this. Um, I'm going to lead on Canopy into Esper Sentinel, because if we draw a pure Steel Paladin, this potentially gets pretty good. When it cracks Misty in response to Esper Sentinel, gets a tap land. Play Memnite, play Ornithopter, pass the turn. 
opponent plays a wooded foothills, cracks a wooded foothills. They shock a steam vents. They are going to fire to kill two things. Esper Sentinel gonna draw us a card. We untap and get a pure steel paladin. So, players of Saga, triggered ability, it gains the ability to add colorless. Play Springleaf Drum. Tap Springleaf Drum for white. Play Giver. Pass the turn. I think my opponent has a Cascade deck. They play a Breeding Pool. Opponent passes. We draw Esper Sentinel. This gains its ability. Play a Horizon Canopy. Play an Esper Sentinel. Opponent Violent Outburst. They reveal Crashing Footfalls. Well, I guess we'll just have to inform them that their 4-4s four have no power here. Play the Esper Sentinel. Tap it for white. Play Pure Steel. Play a Hammer. And draw a card. It's a Plains. Suit up the Ornithopter. Uh, you know what? I could give it Pro Green, pro green to make it unblockable. But I feel like having the ability to protect it matters more. Okay, opponent takes 11. Move the hammer over to the sentinel. This will guarantee we can draw a card. <laughs> Almost 100%. Opponent scoops. All right. So versus um, our opponent's deck, I think we bring in Cage, because I think Cage uh, stops Cascade. Uh, no, because you don't play it from library. You play it from exile. Okay, never mind. Cage stays out. Uh, I could bring in Sanctifier Envec because my opponent's playing a deck that uh, has red removal in it. Could also play Prismatic Ending as a way to answer their stuff. Let me double check my opponent's deck list. See what they would be playing for us. Uh, they'll have Anger of the Gods. They might play Blood Moon. They will have Force of Vigor. Kind of makes me wish I had Apostle's Blessing. Um, but that, is, that does tell me I'm playing Sanctifier Envec. Um, and I'll play Sanctifier over Giver. And like a Steel Shaper's Gift. And we'll try it like this. Alright. We have a bunch of equipment tutors. But no way to equip. I think we got a mulligan that hand. This hand I might be able to work with. So I'm going to keep. And I'm going to put back... Ornithopter, I think. Opponent leads on Misty Rainforest. We draw Pure Steel. Play Esper Sentinel. Opponent cracks Misty Rainforest. Gets Tapland. We play Esper Sentinel. They play a Scalding Tarn. They pass. We draw a Springleaf Drum. So play Horizon Canopy. I could play Springleaf Drum into Sanctifier. Actually, I think that's fine. They would have to kill Esper Sentinel in response. Play Sanctifier. Okay. Well, they can't burn that one. That's going to leave them basically with just Counter Magic or, of course, Force of Vigor. So opponent pays the cost. They Force of Vigor, two permanents. We're a long way off Metalcraft. Hopefully we draw a land. Opponent cracks a Scalding Tarn, gets a basic island. They shock a Breeding Pool. They cascade off of Shardless Agent, hitting Crashing Footfalls, of course. We untap and get a Springleaf Drum. Play the Drum, because it's mana neutral. Play Stoneforge Mystic. We'll go and get a Shadow Spear. Pass the turn. Still need to draw a land. Opponent attacks us for 10, no blocks. We untap. We draw a land. Play a Plains, play Shadow Spear, play Hammer, play Pure Steel, equip, equip, go to combat, attack for a whole lot of life link. If they have another Force of Vigor, we're done, they have a Petty Theft, okay, well, suit up the Pure Steel. I guess if they have a ice to tap or a uh, or like two fires, if they have three damage worth of burn, they can kill us. They go to combat and attack. Block a token. 
If they have another petty theft, we'd lose. Okay, they just had another force of vigor. But we always lost to that, so kind of wish we had Apostle's Blessing. Moving on to game three. I think we just run it back. If we get a like a very fast, like a turn two kill and our opponent does not have a force of uh, vigor, then we're going to win. Play first. Reveal Luris. I uh, believe this qualifies as fast, so we'll keep. And question is, do we lead on Sigardizade or Springleaf Drum? I think it's Springleaf Drum. Pass the turn. That long pause tells me they may have Force of Negation. Put a plays a Scalding Tarn. Passes. We draw an Ink Moth Nexus. So play the Nexus. Play Stoneforge Mystic. Go and tutor up a Colossus Hammer. Float White. Play Sigarda's Aid. Pass the turn. They now have enough targets for a Force of Vigor. They fetch up a Breeding Pool tapped. All right, we untap and draw another Sigarda's Aid. So play a Planes. Animate Ink Moth. Go to combat. Attack, attack. Flash in a hammer. So if they have Petty Theft, we need to equip this to Ink Moth. If they have Force of Vigor, uh, we should be equipping this to Stoneforge. I think we actually equip this to Stoneforge. Because Burn Spell also stops us. Use the ability. Hit our opponent for 11 and 1 Infect. Pass the turn. When a Cracks Misty goes to 7, gets an Island, then passes. They untap. They play a Mountain. Pass the turn. We untap. We draw another Cigar to Zaid. Anabeat, Ink Moth. Go to combat. Attack, attack. They have to do something or they'll die to... Stoneforge. And if they do something that answers only Stoneforge, we flash in another hammer and win. Prismari Command, doing two damage to Ink Moth and destroying the other hammer. Flash in another Colossus Hammer. Equip up the Ink Moth. Lethal? Nice. Alright, I'll see you guys in round three. Alright, I uh, think this hand is fine, so we're gonna keep. It's not perfect, because we don't have a way to equip, but... Play Esper Sentinel, play Memnite, pass. Opponent plays a Bloodstained Mire, fetches up a Mountain and plays a Swift Spear, then passes. We draw an Ornithopter, play an Urza Saga, play a Stoneforge Mystic. We will go and get Shadow Spear, play Ornithopter, pass the turn. So we might be up against just regular Burn or Prowess. Opponent does nothing. We draw an Ink Moth Nexus. Urza Saga gets its ability. Play Ink Moth Nexus. Pass the turn. Opponent is going to Unholy Heat the Esper Sentinel. We have no way to increase its power at instant speed. So opponent untaps. They cast Expressive Iteration. They get a Spire Bluff Canal. They go to combat. Attack for two. No blocks. Take two and go to 18. Stop on their end step. Make a construct. Opponent bolts the construct. We untap. Make a construct. Draw planes. Tutor up. Spring leaf drum. Play a planes. Play out a colossus hammer. Go to combat. Hit our opponent for two. Opponent untaps. They play a Dragon's Rage Channeler. Expressive Iteration, they get to Surveil. They put a Steam Vents into the Grave. They're going to exile a Bauble. Oh, they exile a Fiery Islet. They play the Islet. They play a second Dragon's Rage Channeler. We untap. Draw Planes. Play a Planes. Play Shadow Spear. Equip. Play a Hammer. Just to get that extra point of damage, go to Combat. Attack for 8. Make it 9. Go up to 27. Opponent goes down to 5. Pass the turn. Opponent Expressive Iteration. Double Surveil. Single Prowess Trigger. They put a Lava Dart in the Grave along with a Bauble. They need like an Abraid to handle the Construct. They hit a Mountain. They play a Mountain. They play a Soul Scar Mage and attack us for 6 in the air. That's fine. We untap. We draw Sigarda's Aid. So, play Sigarda's Aid, go to combat, attack for a lot. Opponent can burn it down to very small. 
if they use like lava dart and a lightning bolt and okay there's a lightning bolt prowess triggers they shrink it into a five five second bolt oh this is a lot of burn that isn't going at our face after we already gained a bunch of life okay put luris in her hand pass the turn opponent untaps they play a sprite dragon they sleight of hand counters on everything tons of surveil triggers they're playing seasoned pyro in this list third dragon's rage channeler into the grave they get their card they go to combat they attack for a lot no blocks they play another channeler we untap we draw a silent clearing play the clearing cycle it we get an urza saga play luris play sentinel pass the turn we really just need to draw another hammer or anything that can get us a hammer we'll have to do some chump blocking this turn i think when it plays a sprite dragon they play a bauble look what this free effect is doing look at this innocuous free effect <laughs> for anyone wondering why i don't like free effects air quotes opponent cycles fiery islet they also have two lava darts they play a land they lava dart ornithopter am i dead because for some reason dragon's rage channeler flies yeah i'm actually dead <laughs> we gained nine life and forced our opponent to put 10 points of burn against the board rather than our face for anyone who doesn't think this is a problem or doesn't like like that's the game plan they want to be playing you should because it's broken and it should be banned but kano none of the individual cards are too powerful you might be right it might be a well there's too many of that effect to be redundant and now it's consistent and now it's too good that very well might be i don't care um all right, so versus this deck, I think we bring in the Prismatic Endings. Uh, Giver of Runes is going away. We definitely 100% need the Sanctifiers. Um, and I'm going to drop the Steel Shapers Gifts, and we're going to play it like this. Sanctifiers, in theory, make it impossible for our opponent to assemble Delirium. Well, not, like, truly impossible, but it makes it much more difficult. Uh, this hand doesn't do anything. This hand doesn't do a whole lot. Kind of really doesn't do anything. I'm going to have to go to five. Sure. Put back planes and uh, I guess ink moth. Lead on cigar to aid. Pass the turn. Need to draw a hammer. Put it leads on dragon's rage channeler bauble. I mean, the most egregious card is actually this one because this just makes turning on delirium a joke. Not that delirium is a particularly difficult cost. There's a hammer. Play a planes. Play an ornithopter. Play a hammer. Suit it up. Play a shadow spear. Suit it up. Pass the turn. So we lose to an Abrade. We lose to, I think, a Bounce spell. Opponent has a Swift Spear. We lose to Seal of Removal, which is a Bounce spell. <sighs> they hit us for five. We draw a Planes. Play a Planes. Replay Ornithopter. The problem is not replaying the Ornithopter. It is re-equipping the Colossus Hammer, because we had no way to do that on board without a Pure Steel Paladin, which is incredibly fragile versus our opponent's deck. I do think my opponent's deck is a quite the tough matchup. Um, when it gets an unholy heat and they get to answer our guy for one mana yep so like even if I draw a pallet in here I can't do anything about it put Luris into our hand, pass the turn when it plays a bauble alright, I'll see you guys in round four alright, this looks like a uh, really good hand, we're gonna keep now if I'm suspecting hand hate from my opponent what I should play is Sigarda's aid first um, it is by far the most difficult thing to answer in our deck, especially in game one when it's on the board, and that might be the safer play. Uh, what I want to do is play Esper Sentinel and Memnite in the same turn on turn one, then just untap Sigarda's aid and equip on turn two. But I'm going to go with the safe play here. Pass the turn. Because my opponent may be focused on, if they have something, removing what's on board. Play a Planes. Play a Hammer. Suit it up. Go to combat. Hit them for 11. Take them to 9. Play Esper Sentinel. Pass the turn. Now if they cast anything, we're going to draw cards. Okay, Prismatic Ending on the Hammer. We get to draw a Mem Knight. I really think they should have hit the Mem Knight there. Play Horizon Canopy. Sack it to draw. Play Giver. Play Mem Knight. Go to combat. Hit our opponent for 2. They go to 7. They untap. Okay, so opponent plays a Flooded Strand, they fetch and go to six, they get a basic island. It's Teferi, maybe? 
is a Dryad of the Elysian Grove. They play a Valakut. We draw a Giver, play Horizon Canopy, sack it to draw Urza's Saga, play another Giver, pass the turn, opponent untaps, they draw, four mana, they play Omnath, so I think we're dying to Scapeshift. They play a land, they gain life, they play a land, they gain five mana, they kill a giver. Yep, that's game. So five color blob. Um, Sanctifier doesn't really help here. I guess that means we play Fragmentize and Path. Prismatic Ending, we're never going to have enough colors to actually kill anything. So... Get rid of Steel Shaper's Gift, and need to cut one card. It's probably a Sentinel. Try it like this. All right, we get to play first. We have everything but a hammer. Um, yeah, we'll risk it. Why not? If we draw a hammer, it's game over. I think on turn two. So play an Ink Moth, play Springleaf Drum, play Ornithopter, play Sigarda's Aid. Pass the turn. Gonna play a tap land. Come on, hammer. Another ink moth. Play planes. Play pure steel. Pass the turn. Gonna play a stomping ground. Explores. Plays a tap land. We untap. Draw horizon canopy. Play the canopy. Cycle it. Get a stone forge mystic. Go and get a Colossus Hammer. Hit our opponent for two. I'm gonna play as a fetch land. They get a Plains. They play an Omnath and draw a card. We untap and draw a Giver. Enemy Ink Moth. Go to combat. They've gotta have a force. That's the only thing that makes sense here. Attack. Opponent cannot block. Activate Stoneforge. I guess. I guess they could have, could have Force of Vigor rather than uh, something else. Draw Shadow Spear. Suit up the Ink Moth. They could have Solitude. A lot of these plays would have made... A lot of the things that I'm uh, considering that they may have had would have made a lot more sense to have done sooner. Pass the turn. Problem is now Pure Steel's out there without any protection at all. Gonna play Dryad. Plays a land, which is a Valakut. Plays a land, which is another Valakut that kills both of our creatures. Okay. Get it for four. Play an Ink Moth Nexus. Play a Giver. Pass the turn. But, like, all my opponent really has to do is leave up a Fetch Land, and then we would just die. Opponent has a prismatic ending for the hammer that makes pure steel paladin not a victory. So if we draw hammer or maybe stoneforge, we can win. That is neither of those things. Play an ink moth. Play a memnite. Pass the turn. Opponent untaps, they draw. Opponent shoots us. Okay, yep, we're just dead. Alright, I'll see you guys in round five. Alright, we're gonna be on the play for round five, and uh, I'm gonna keep this. So turn one, we're going to go Springleaf Drum, Ornithopter, Steel Shaper's Gift into Hammer. The question is, am I playing Ink Moth Nexus or am I playing a Planes first? If I play Ink Moth Nexus, I can play a Planes the turn after to play Paladin and Hammer. Um, and I don't think that adjusts the clock. If I play Ink Moth first, it has the ability to attack on turn two, but we won't be able to play... Paladin. I think we lead on planes. That's how that works out. So play a planes, play a drum, play an ornithopter, play a steel shaper's gift, get a hammer. 
This way, if the Ornithopter gets removed, I can still play Paladin and play Hammer if I wanted to. Opponent leads on Scalding Tarn. They pass. We draw Sigarda's Aid. Play Ink Moth. Play Sigarda's Aid. We go to combat. Attack for zero. Make it 11 or 10. Okay, they get a mountain. This is an Unholy Heat or a Bolt. It is a Lightning Bolt, which is somehow less offensive than Unholy Heat. So next turn, as long as they don't have Hand Hate, we can play Pure Steel, get a mana, animate uh, Ink Moth, and equip it. Opponent plays an Inspiring Vantage, Lava Spikes our face. We draw Planes, play a Planes, play Pure Steel, animate Ink Moth. We do not have Metalcraft, so I could not immediately equip. Not that that matters. Okay, opponent shard volleys. Uh, this lets us still get in for one. Okay, opponent plays a sunbaked canyon. We untap, we draw a memnite, play a planes, put Luris in her hand, pass the turn. Not playing out a memnite because we're gonna need metalcraft next turn. Opponent cycles sunbaked canyon. That's a little bit unexpected for a burn player. They play another inspiring vantage, and they play an eidolon. We untap and we draw another Ink Moth. Uh, so if I animate Ink Moth, that leaves me with th uh, three mana by playing this Ink Moth. And I can play Luris, but I can't replay Pure Steel. So play Memnite, Eidolon damage. So I can't kill my opponent this turn, I don't think. Play Ink Moth, play Luris. Tap Memnite, play Pure Steel, take damage, suit up Luris. Pass the turn. Now our opponent somehow has to burn us down while also bolting anything they block with so that we don't, er, yeah, so that we don't gain life. Um, pretty sure that was unwinnable for them unless they had mono skull cracks. So bring in Sanctifiers, drop Steel Shapers, and one Giver. Try like this. Sanctifier is only important because of pro-red. Alright, we will keep. Opponent plays an Inspiring Vantage into a Monastery Swift Spear. They hit us for one. We draw an Ink Moth, play a Plains, play Sigarda's Aid, pass the turn. Opponent untaps. They play an Inspiring Vantage. They Lava Spike us. Go to combat, hit us for two. We untap and draw a Memnite, play Ink Moth, Play Esper Sentinel, play Memnite, pass the turn, opponent untaps, they draw, they play a mountain, they go to combat, they attack, no blocks, take one, and opponent passes. We untap, we draw a second hammer. That actually makes a huge difference. Um, play an Ink Moth, go to combat, attack, attack, Colossus Hammer, suit up the Memnite, we're going to pass priority to see if they do anything now. Deflecting Palm. The next time a source of your choice would deal damage to you this turn, prevent that damage. And it deals that much damage to the source's controller. So we're going to go to two. I have one option here. We flash in Colossus Hammer. We suit up Esper Sentinel. So they can't pay for the Esper Sentinel trigger. And now we need to draw Shadow Spear exactly. That's the only thing that gets us out of this mess. I'm 99% certain. Okay. Stoneforge Mystic is not what I asked for. So Deflecting Palm is going to take us for to 1, because I have no way to path my own guy. Or take us to 2, opponent goes to 9. So we die to anything. Opponent smash to smithereens. We draw Urza's Saga, and that kills us. Okay. I definitely think an Apostle's Blessing is going to be necessary in this deck. Uh, in the sideboard, the newer list... That I was looking at actually has it. This is the older list that I'm only playing because I have four Urza Saga now. I would like to play first. Reveal Luris. Uh, we have uh, Silent Clearing, Springleaf Drum, into Memnite, into Esper Sentinel. Follow up with Sanctifier. I'm going to keep this. The only way this doesn't work is if my opponent has exactly Forked Bolt, which is not a card I've seen them run for a long time. So play Silent Clearing, Springleaf play Springleaf Drum, play Memnite, play Esper Sentinel. And if even if they had Forked Bolt, we'd still get to draw a card here. They lead on Inspiring Vantage, and pass. We draw Planes, play Planes. Tap Memnite, play Sanctifier Envec. Okay. Pro Red. Go to combat. Hit them for one. 
When it takes one and goes to 19, they untap. They play an inspiring vantage. We untap. Draw Giver of Runes. Play Giver of Runes. Use it to float white. Play Stoneforge Mystic. Tutor up Colossus Hammer. Go to combat. Attack for three. Put a play as a Lightning Helix on the Esper Sentinel. So we draw a card. It's planes. Put a gains three, then takes three, and stays at 19. They untap. They play a Bloodstained Mire. We untap. We draw an Esper Sentinel. Play a planes. Cycle a clearing. Play Memnite. Play Esper Sentinel. Opponent is going to Path Giver of Runes. So we're going to give protection to Stoneforge uh, from red. Okay. Get a planes. Esper Sentinel resolves. Go to combat. Attack for four. Opponent takes four and goes to 15. They crack Bloodstained Mire. They get a mountain. And they smash to Smithereen's Esper Sentinel. Ah, yes. So that wasn't their first non creature spell. And it counts per turn, not since Esper Sentinel was played. So opponent attacks with Goblin Guide, reveals a Pure Steel Paladin on top of our deck. So we untap, draw Pure Steel, play Colossus Hammer, play Shadow Spear. And yes, I could have drawn off of these. I think it's more important to get them on the board for Metalcraft purposes first. Play Pure Steel, put the Hammer on the Sanctifier, put the Shadow Spear on the Sanctifier, go to combat, attack for possibly lethal. Depends on if my opponent has a smash to smithereens or not. Um, if they do, they have to take out the hammer or they just die. If they have a path, um, that would have kept them alive. But then we would have, like, just re-equipped to the paladin. So we gain the life because they destroy the hammer. Pass the turn. Their cards are getting exiled because they're red. I really doubt my opponent's playing Lava Mancer or anything like that. Opponent attacks with Goblin Guide. We reveal a second Sanctifier. So no blocks. Get skewered. I guess if they just have Lava Spike Bolt, we're dead. We untap, draw Sanctifier, go to combat, attack, attack, attack. What is that, six? I can't attack for lethal, so I'm leaving back two Mem Knights. Opponent has a path. Okay, go get a planes. Hit her opponent for three. Put Luris in her hand, equip to a Mem Knight. Pass the turn. Opponent Lava Spikes us to five. They go to combat and do not attack. We draw Saga. Play Saga, gains its ability. Play Luris, cast Colossus Hammer, draw a card, Esper Sentinel, equip the Memnite, play Esper Sentinel, and go to combat. They've got to have another path, I imagine. Attack for 12. Uh, they have Deflecting Palm to finish us off. Oh, we can't re-equip at instant speed. Oh, this has lifelink, so I actually am fine. This is just a fog, because I will take 12 and gain 12 at the same time. Oh, I think it's deflecting. You prevent the damage, and deflecting palm deals that amount of damage to its controller. I'm thinking of um, Shining Shoal. I'm thinking of Shining Shoal, which is worded differently, I believe. There's another effect that redirects damage that is worded that the uh, source deals the damage to the controller, or deals the damage to a choice of yours instead. <sighs> well, deflecting palm gets us, which is pretty sweet tech and burn. Always has been. Um... I think we got kind of unlucky. I think our deck is really good. Um, I think the fact that our deck is so prevalent means that the metagame is kind of prepared to play against this deck. Uh, so it's better than I think I showed it uh, on stream, to, or not on stream, but um, on recording today. Uh, I think this deck is still really good. I think it's top tier. Uh, I did not take the most optimum line like three or four times. Uh, generally called it out when I think there was a better one. I Not 100% on that, though. Uh... I think the mono white version is still better than the red white version, playing like Magnetic Theft and uh, what is it, Core Outfitter to just equip. That one is more of an all in um, equip hammer and win kind of a deal. And it's way more fragile. And I think because Prismatic Ending exists, it's automatically worse. Uh, this version, while way more expensive, is a lot less fragile. You have the opportunity to re equip when you're talking about Pure Steel Paladin. Um, you have room in your deck to play things like Esper Sentinel and, and draw yourself cards and whatnot. So I definitely think the sideboard in this version that I'm playing needs some work. Uh, I did see the most recent list is playing Apostle's Blessing, which is a big deal. That's one that I um, was considering putting in. I don't know if I call it out at the beginning of the video or not, but that's one that definitely should be in the sideboard. It's in the newer version of the deck that I just wasn't playing um, because 
Giver of Runes is great and all, but Apostle's Blessing says target creature or artifact you control. Um, and it can cost one colorless, and we're playing eight colorless lands. Otherwise, you could play Blacksmith skill. You could just give the, you know, Hexproof and Indestructible treatment to any permanent that way. I think if for some reason Apostle's Blessing is expensive and you didn't have it, you could play Blacksmith skill as a budget substitution. It would be worse uh, in some ways. It wouldn't cost you life, but it would cost you Colored Banna. And... Um, I think that's all I have to say about this deck. I'm really not pleased with the current modern metagame. I think it's too fast. I think um, I think the fast decks are too fast, and I think the slow decks have mana that's too free. Uh, so none of the decks are interesting to me, which is one reason why I haven't been playing Constructed. Um, and technically, this deck is a fast deck, and it's more easily interactable than the other fast decks, so I find this deck to be personally less egregious, even though it is more glass cannon. Uh, and that is something I dislike about uh, a lot of decks in Modern. This deck can kill you on turn two. That's not a good thing. I don't think it's a good thing for the Modern format. But this deck is easy to hate on because if you have a Lightning Bolt, if you have an Unholy Heat, if you have a Lava Dart, if you have a insert X, Y, or Z instant removal spell that costs one, you win. And you really only need one. Um, it's not like... Uh, it's not like Ragavan, where you have to have it, and you have to have it on turn one uh, every time they play Ragavan, which is a single card. This is, you have to have it, and you have to have it on turn one if I assemble a four-card combination that uh, I do not get every game, because if I got every game, I would have 5 would this league. Like, it's, um, to me, it seems less egregious. But uh, I don't know how to fix the format, and I'm going to leave that to somebody who's a lot smarter than me. I really, really think they ought to ban Luris um, because Luris incentivizes you to play a particular game style that encourages staying low to the ground and allows you to take over the late game, the end game, without playing expensive cards, which is really what you should be doing in the late game. Any deck that wants to go late should be able to cast a 5, 6, 7 drop if they want to uh, in order to end the game. Um, Luris just says, okay, well, if you want to play one and two drops, you can play Bobble and you can draw two cards for the rest of the game while having perfect information on all your opponent's draws. Uh, it's just not really fun or fair. Uh, the cost of playing it is too low. Uh, companions were supposed to be build your deck around, and the problem with Luris always has been, ever since it was revealed, even before the stupid companion change, that it went into too many decks that already existed for completely free. So I really think Luris should be banned. Uh, I think Bauble should be banned. And I I kind of pointed it out during this game that, like... Or, or during this league, I mean, that Bauble, like... It's just... It just lets you look at a card and it draws you a card for zero mana and you don't even get the card immediately. Yeah, that's the problem. The problem is it's a zero mana artifact. And how many times has a zero mana artifact been broken? Uh, like, every single time because the affinity mechanic, mechanic exists... Uh, it's broken because of Luris. It's broken because of Emery for multiple reasons. It's broken because of Metalcraft reasons. It was broken in this deck when we were playing it for Pure Steel Palette in Metalcraft and then just have it replace itself. And the only reason we're not playing it is because Esper Sentinel does effectively the same thing multiple times and can wield a hammer. That's the only reason it's not played in this deck right now. Um, but, like, during the Blitz matchup, which Blitz is a deck that I think is way, way too strong... Um, it's way too consistent for how strong it is. Like, this deck and Blitz kill at a similar speed, and that should say something, but Blitz also plays, I don't know, 20 threats that all do the same thing as one of our threats wielding a hammer. They just get too big too quick, um, and they cast too many spells for free. Bobble enabling Delirium, building your affinity count, drawing you cards, being easily bought back, it, it it's going in too many decks and I really think Bobble needs to go and I think Luris needs to go too and I think part of the problem is they're both legal but that is not the whole of the problem and uh, you know there's a bunch of other cards that probably shouldn't exist in the mo modern format I'd really love to see Ragavan banned I really hate that card I hate the fact that it exists I hate everything it does in the format uh, Urza's Saga might deserve a ban probably does the fact that it's uh, people were clamoring for a ban really, really early, and the fact that it's kind of taken a back seat tells you how egregious the cards above it are. Um, like in this deck, there's some pretty insane so insane lines with Urza's Saga that I think were in my last video. We came across a few of them. We didn't really see any of them in this league, 
but uh, Urza Saga is definitely a broken card. Whether or not it can exist in the modern format safely, uh, I kind of it kind of remains to be seen. And I think until we see some other cards banned, we're not going to really be certain. Certain. If I had to guess, I would say the card should probably be banned because it incentivizes a whole bunch of things you don't want in the format, and is one of those must answer cards. It's why a bunch of people are playing Alpine Moon. It's because the card is super super strong against Urza Saga, ex like especially. Um, and because like Alpine Moon and, and Blood Moon and all of that land destruction is now like played in the sideboard specifically for Urza's Saga, uh, decks like Tron just simply can't exist in the modern format right now, not in a real way. Uh, if you try and take Tron to a competitive event and play against any of those decks, you will lose every single time, like 95% chance to lose. Um, and that's if you don't get aggroed out because the format's super fast. You, you, like, you can't play a slower deck. You have to be doing something every single turn in Modern right now. And there are previous Modern formats in the past where you didn't have to, where you could play a card, you know, you could play a card every other turn. Maybe you needed to hold up a reactive answer. No. Current Modern format, you proactively play something every turn that either disrupts your opponent's game plan or uh, builds your own. Like, people were worried about Counterspell being too good in the format. Counterspell isn't even being played. Like... Oh, yeah, so the Jeskai control list that, that took the top spot of a recent tournament. Not everybody can play Jeskai control, I can tell you that, because I'm one of those people. I don't have the patience to play control and to memorize the best answers for whatever threats and to play entirely complex lines and plan to go longer than turn three because no other deck is doing that. Um, and, and why would I pay two mana to answer a threat that came down on my opponent's first turn, when I have zero mana, like, yeah, I don't know. A lot of the cards that are causing problems very obviously were going to cause problems the instant they were created and made known. Um, I don't know why those cards are getting printed other than to sell packs, because I don't even think the design of those cards are interesting. I think they are designed to be powerful and not cool. And powerful things can be cool, uh, but there's a difference. There's a very, very clear difference when you design something that is cool and you design something that is powerful. Um, and honestly, I really think the restrictions breed interesting things. And when you just print power with no restriction, it's not interesting. And if it is interesting, it's going to get boring very quickly. Anyway, thank you for coming to my TED Talk. I hope you guys enjoyed this content. If you did, please leave a like, drop a comment, subscribe to the channel if you're so inclined. And remember, you can follow me on Twitch. Same username over there as you find me on here. I stream Wednesday afternoons to evenings. And uh, generally, it's a pretty good time. The last stream, we did a whole bunch of modern content. We played some jank modern stuff, uh, experimented a little bit with Scred. We played a, an Orzov Flicker deck. We played a little bit of Coffers Control. We played this deck and uh we finished off with a, a match of blue tron where we actually won and if any of that sounds interesting to you the vod for that stream went up last night anyway like i said you're all wonderful human beings and i hope to see you guys in the next one bye hey just wanted to give a shout out to my patrons for the month of august you guys are wonderful and i really appreciate your support it's been helping me make a lot of good content if you want your name to show up in this list, there's a link to my Patreon in the description down below if you want to support this channel. Thank you so much.